Hi and welcome to this video tutorial on creating a fly-through animation in Rhino 7. We're going to be using this scene here which is a simple rendered model using Rhino's built-in render engine and we're going to be creating a fly-through animation taking us on a short fly-through through this model. Now to start with we're going to load up Rhino's built-in animation tools. These can be found under the render tools tab here under these three icons. If you can't see this Render Tools tab, they can also be found under Tools, Toolbar Layout, and under the default option, if you tick on Animation there, it will open up the Animation Tools there. Now we're gonna start by setting up our fly-through animation, and to do that, we're gonna open up this Animation Setup window, and we'll be using the second tab along here to set up a fly-through animation. Now Rhino has limited animation tools here, as you can see these four little tools here set up different types of animation within Rhino, but in this video we're going to be focusing on the fly-through animation setup. So to set up a fly-through animation we essentially just need to draw a path for our camera to follow through our model. To do this I'm going to draw it out in the top view here, and I'm going to just use a simple curve option to draw out a path through the model. I'm going to keep the number of points on this curve quite low to keep it quite simple there. And once I've drawn that, I'm going to go back to the perspective view and we'll just move that line into its location in 3D there. Now it might be that your line has some vertical movement, i.e. it's going from a lower position up to a higher position in the model. And this we can adjust using the control points if you want to, to adjust different positions there. We can also adjust the sort of steepness of this curve using the control points too. For now, I'm going to keep this line as it is, so we're moving from this low point here up to a high point in the model. Now, to set up our fly through animation, we then need to select the fly through animation tool, click on the line we want to use. And once that's selected, you'll get a small window set up here with set animation. Now I'm going to keep the number of frames to 100 at the moment. And what that will mean is it will split that line into 100 small sections and will then essentially render out a frame for each of those 100 sections in the line. What this means that if the more frames you have in your animation, the longer the animation will be. Think of an animation as roughly being played back at around 30 frames a second. Therefore, if we have 100 frames, that will equate to around 3 seconds of animation. So the more frames you have, the more seconds of animation you're going to get. Um, I keep the file type usually as a JPEG and the capture method as render full. This will mean that it will be using whatever render engine you've set to be your default render engine in Rhino. Keep the viewport as the perspective or the same view that you're currently in, and this way the lens length of that animation will be the same as the lens length in that viewport. So once that's set, we'll hit OK. And you won't see any change when you set that up, but in order to preview what that animation looks like, we can then hit the green preview button here in your animation tools. And you'll see there we're getting a preview of what that fly through animation looks like there. Now, if we want to change the speed of the animation, as we've said, we can then reset that animation from there and just up that number of frames to give us a slower, smoother path. So if I set it to 300, and then we play that back, you'll see the animation now is much slower. It's kind of moving on the same route, but it's got a lot of a kind of longer, smoother animation due to the frames in there. So the number of frames equates to the speed in that way. If as well you want to make that path sort of flatter, as we spoke about before, it might be that you don't want this vertical movement of the line and you want your camera to be tracking perfectly horizontal on your fly through. To do that, we can use the set point command to flatten all our points on that Z axis. So if we type in set point, like so, we can set it to the Z axis there. And if we get a line to C plane, it will flatten those points out and then I can kind of click in the scene to put that line in place. I usually click somewhere random at first and then just move the line in place manually like so there until we've got the kind of perfect angle that we need for our line. So once you've got your line set up we can then start to render out our animation. 
Now to do this, I usually test it first, just using a quick render preview to test that that animation is working. So I'll usually pick a point or a kind of view that's roughly on the same location as my line and then just go render, render preview to test that animation out. So that preview is now rendering out here and you can see that the lighting, the textures are sort of working with this scene. So I'm going to keep those as they are. Now it's important to know that when you're rendering out an image, the time the image takes to render is based upon this sample value at the bottom. You can see at the moment mine is a number over 1500. So what this means is once this number on the left hits 1500, the render will then be deemed as complete and will stop. Now this 1500 figure is essentially set on whatever quality I give my render. So if we put it to a high quality render, that number will be higher, and a lower quality render, that number will be lower. Um, what that means is that every time that goes through a sample, the image gets slightly higher and higher quality. But as you can see, the number of samples you have will affect the time of the render. So the more samples needed will equate to a longer render time overall. So for an animation, when you're rendering out 300 frames or so, you want to keep that sample number down to keep the render time quick per scene. For this, I think 1500 is probably too much. I can probably lower it down to give myself a quicker render speed. So to play around with this sample value and to lower it down, we'll have to reset it in the render settings. So I'm going to stop that render there and we're going to open up the render properties. So we're going to go to render, render properties here and open these up. Now the resolution and quality will also affect the time of the render. So bear in mind, you might want to lower that resolution down if your render is taking a really long time to render out. I'm going to keep mine at this sort of ratio at the moment. This is kind of relatively high quality. I'd say anywhere sort of above 1,500 to 2,000 is a good sort of high quality image. So this is slightly lower than that. But for this kind of image, for this test, I think I'm going to keep it at this resolution for now. Now, the quality at the moment is set to final quality, which is giving us that sample value of 1,500 to hit. You can lower the quality here to lower that number, or if you want a specific number, we can scroll down to the very bottom to the Rhino Render Advanced settings, and you can, under this sample sessions value here, we can lower the sample value to our required value. So if I set it to 50, which is much lower, and click on this override production render quality, it will then mean that it will use this value for its final number of samples needed rather than the quality we've set up here in our final quality option. It will now ignore this. It will just use that value here to set that render up. So once we've done that, we hit OK. We've got our lighting set up. We've got our textures set up. So those, all those things are now ready for our render to be animated out and recorded in that way. Now to render out each of those frames in our animation, we then need to hit this record animation button. So once you've got it all set, hit record animation. It will ask where you want this animation to be saved. And I'm going to save it just in this target folder here, which is just under documents and animation. Um, where it says run animation, I usually keep this as no. I don't want it to play the animation at the same time. I just want it to render out those frames. So once you're ready to record it, we then need to hit enter and it will start recording out those frames. So we'll hit enter and we'll have a look at that first frame as it comes out. So it might take a little bit of time to start the render out, but we'll just wait for that to load up. Now you can see that that first image is loading up here. And as it loads up the mesh, you have a look in the bottom left hand corner and it'll give you an indication of how far along that render is going. So it loads up the mesh and now you can see it's loading up the samples. So we're quite quick now, it only needs to get to 50. So each render frame is going to be quite fast in this instance. It's looking like it's probably going to be around 15 seconds there per frame. And once that hits 50, it will then save that frame and then it will start rendering out the next frame of animation. And here is the window where we're saving out that render frame of animation. So all that's going to do is just run through each of those frames in our animation and save each one in each turn in this folder until we have the full animation rendered out. So thank you for watching. I'm going to let that render out now 
and in the next video we're going to look at taking those frames and turning them into a video clip using After Effects. So thank you for watching and if you want to watch any more videos on texturing in Rhino or setting up any other animation techniques in Rhino, feel free to watch some of the videos on the channel.